Yes, yes, we're here guys with a preview video with Sammy from Fulhamish with uh, with the preview, obviously, FA Cup game coming up on Saturday, um, fourth round, and uh, yeah, to, to tell us a little bit more about Fulham and how they're getting on this season, we've got Sammy. Sammy, how you doing, man? You alright? Yeah, I'm good. How are you guys? Yeah, yeah, we're alright, we're alright, but I'm not going to lie, mate, um, don't really know much about what's going on with Fulham's season, to be honest, I don't, not, not too... I don't keep up to date really with the championship. So when when I got you guys, I didn't really know, and then I was shocked, man. You guys are smashing it in the championship. What's going on here? You got five points clear or something? You got a game in hand on Rovers? What's going on? Yeah, we're scoring more goals than you guys. There can't be too many teams uh, doing that <laughs> at the moment. Um, yeah, it's it's been a really good season. Um, the championship feels like quite a weak league this year, and uh, fortunately, Fulham have uh, managed to kind of get their heads down. Get the points total up. We're scoring a lot of goals on the way. Uh, early this month, we scored seven, then six, then six in three consecutive games, which was pretty nuts. Mm. Team's playing well. A uh, bit of a dodgy result on Saturday against Blackpool, which was uh, only a one-all draw, which a team we really should have beaten. But other than that, yeah, can't complain too much. It's been uh, it's been a pretty good season so far. Yeah, yeah. How are you guys playing then? If you'd have to describe like Fulham's style of play and, and, and City fans watching this thinking, what are we going to be up against? So are, are you a sort of like Mourinho defensive team or how you do you try and play attacking football? How is it that Fulham usually usually approach matches? Yeah, definitely attacking football um, and, and certainly not content to just sit on a one or two goal lead and defend. We like to get uh, as many goals as possible as we can in games. And it's certainly not possession for the sake of it either, which is what we found it was under Scott Parker last season in the Premier League. We can swiftly counter-attack when needed. Uh, we have some beautiful transition play, um, but also aren't afraid to go direct to Mitrovic when needed. He can hold up the play and uh, and bring uh, and bring others, uh, our wide players and, and, and players like Fabio Carvalho into the mix. So it, it's certainly a pretty attractive style of football, but also not just tiki taka possession football just for the absolute sake of it we can go direct and change it up which uh you know mm. not too dissimilar from what i've seen of city over the years really yes okay possession football but also not afraid to mix up when needed mm. if i'm not mistaken you guys are the experts yeah oh, i don't I won't call us experts mate we're getting <laughs> slander in the comment section um who are we looking at then as obviously again you know city fans thinking who who's going to be the danger man i mean you mentioned mitrovic there we all know about mitrovic who else really in that team though uh does city really have to look at who could cause some some problems for us well, I think the the key man is Fabio Carvalho. Um, he was a big name on transfer deadline day because Liverpool very nearly signed him and then didn't submit the paperwork. I saw in that. Time. Yeah, what happened there? So the paperwork didn't go through. So was a deal done? Was it a tran was it a permanent transfer? So it would have been a permanent transfer with a loan back. It's a bit of a complicated situation. Carvalho is only eighteen, and so he's only on a short term contract at Fulham, which is obviously a bit problematic. Um, mm. He is going to be a future wonder kid. He is sensational. Really? But Liverpool tried to put in a fairly low offer because there's only six months left of his contract. Fulham held out for more money um in the end it did sound like they agreed a fee but just way too late and they missed the deadline and for now he still is fulham's player but he won't be um come next season sadly but for now he is ours and yeah he's a little he's a little genius he's number 10 um he's strong he's physical he battles he's creative he can um he can score he can assist um, he, he links up brilliantly with Mitrovic. I think he's got eight league goals this season and a few assists, and he's missed about a third of it as well. So mm. in his first season of professional football, I think that says a lot about um, what you can expect of him. So if he starts, I imagine he'll be very, very keen to impress uh, against yeah. a side like Man City because for him, it's all a big audition for what big club tries and signs mm. him in the summer. I imagine he, he fancy a bit of a Man City as one of those clubs. So I'm sure he'd be keen to um, impress uh, the watching Pep and uh, and a wider audience than he gets in the championship. So he's the, he's the danger man for me if he starts. Because of course, it's hard to know exactly how Fulham will treat this game because as much as it is a big game and a nice trip to the Etihad, um, we have got a league game against Millwall on Tuesday, which is to be honest, a bit more important. So I wouldn't be surprised mm. if we actually rested a player or two, which, which sounds well, mad. 
Yeah, no, I mean, that was going to be my next question. And and you guys are flying in the championship. Um, what is it? Five points, I think you are, clear of, the, clear of Rovers. Yeah. And you've got a game in hand. And, and it's it's a real difficult one for you guys. Because, you know, we've all been in this sort of situation before where, do you, you know, you're not really expected to win this game. Do you come to City and just go, you know what? We could kind of do without the extra games in the FA Cup. Let, let's just sort of play weekend team and focus on the, on, on the league because getting back into the Premier League has to be the focus. Um, or do you go, you know what? We've got nothing to lose here. Let, let's take it on. It's, it's, it's a real difficult one. Have you got any sort of idea? Has, has the manager mentioned anything in, in the weeks before that sort of give any hints? How, how are you feeling about it? I think the manager might use it as a bit of a test just to see, look, there's absolutely no pressure on this game. We're expected to lose. I think from a fan's perspective, I would prefer that we kept it comfortable. I don't think getting batted 5-0 is going to be any good for, for uh, yeah. morale or confidence. But then again, lots of very good teams have, have gone to the Etihad and um, been um, battered away for, for six or for seven. I think Marcus Silva will play an 80% strong team he might rotate a few players like the goalkeeper or anyone that's uh, picked up a knock and there might be a couple of players who he wants to bring into a bit of fitness but I think he'll play the key men I think he'll play the likes of Carvalho and Mitrovic and he'll say to them look you've been brilliant all season if you went one nil up against City you might cause them a few problems impress on the bigger stage because this is the kind of competition that we want to face next year and so mm. use it as a bit of a test as to where we are in comparison to the best team in the country and look if we pull off the shock of shocks then it will be an amazing day but also if we lost 3-1 I think everyone would just think fine yeah. it's Man City what were we expecting so there's no mm. pressure on the game but also I think the, the I just don't want to get battered I just like yeah. to keep it respectable and I think that Fulham will we've got a decent defense I don't think we'll win but I also just don't see us getting hammered but I could be yeah. who knows no I mean and I've I've heard ex-pros in the past as well say you know you really don't want to be getting hammered because although it's a different competition it can then you know creep into training and then creep into the next game before you know it that hammering that that, uh, that that you just passed off as an irrelevant game could then creep into t t to your league form. So no, I would I would agree, man. You don't you don't want to be resting too many players because a, a thump in there and it could it could creep into your um, into your league form. Um, Sammy, any weaknesses for Fulham here? You know, if, if I know obviously City will just be thinking, let's just play our normal game, and if everyone turns up from a City point of view, would expect to win the match. But is there any obvious weaknesses in your side that you think City could potentially look to exploit? I don't think our defence is always amazing. I think that it's fine, but the likes of Birmingham City, uh, Bristol City, um, Stoke City have all got goals against us. Blackpool, we haven't keep, kept a clean sheet much in the last kind of month or so. I think that we are susceptible at the back. And that is my worry, really, is that the defence has a poor day. A player like Tim Ream, uh, I think he's fantastic at championship level, but his pace gets a bit caught out uh, up top. And at fullback, we've been having a few issues with um, injuries. Our best right back is um, Kenny Tete is injured. We've just brought Nico Williams in from Liverpool, uh, mm. a, a cover right back. I mean, it'll be his first game if he does play. So it'll be interesting to see how he gets on. Um, and at left back, Anthony Robinson um, is, is a good player, but also... Um, can, can sometimes be susceptible. Of course, one of our main men in defence is Tosin Adarabayo, who uh, mm. came from you guys for £2 million. He's been a rock for most of the season, has the occasional blip, as he did on Saturday. He gave away the ball that led to Blackpool's goal, but I imagine he'll be keen to put in um, a good performance. Yeah. He didn't really do his best in the league games last season against City, but I think he still believes that he could have done a job for you guys. And I know you guys were quite upset, well, not upset, mm. but maybe disappointed it didn't work out a bit better for someone like Tosin, who was homegrown and clearly mm. loved Man City. I imagine he'll be keen to put in a good performance, but yeah, he needs to cuss out some of the mistakes because if he if he plays like he did against Blackpool on Saturday, then we, we could be in for a bit, a bit of a pasting. Yeah, yeah. No, I think a lot of City fans were a little bit disappointed. Um, they didn't see him get, get given a, a go and a chance. And I thought a lot of City fans thought the £2 million fee was um, not really reflective of his market value. So... 
it's interesting to see what will happen with his career. I think he's got a bright future ahead of him, but obviously he's got to stay focused. And uh, and uh, you know, I think I think getting back in the Premier League is absolutely huge. You know, testing himself against the the best and and uh, the best coaches, the best the best players, um, and see how far he can go. Because I, I genuinely think he's got a brilliant uh, future ahead of him. Score prediction then, Sammy. What, what you reckon? I'm going to go for 3-1 City. I wouldn't be surprised if we equalised or even took the lead, but I think ultimately with Fulham having one eye on a on a important yeah. league game against Millwall on, on Tuesday, I just don't think we will be going for this 100%. So I could see it running away from us in the second half. I mean, you could play your third team and you're better than most sides in the, uh, in, in the Premier League. It was always a difficult one for us, but looks like we're taking a decent amount of fans up to, uh, up to the Etihad on Saturday. I think um, no, we've never had a safe standing um, away end mm. before, which we'll, we've had standing away ends, but none of this kind of safe standing. So I think that'll be a new one for a few fans. And yeah, it will be a good opportunity to test ourselves, but I think we'll fall a little bit short. But I'd like to see us nick a goal, maybe make it interesting. But if we go out, I personally don't think it's the end of the world. People might disagree no. with me, but I don't think it's the end of the world. No, no, of course. League form has to take priority. Um, and, and with those having two weeks off, I'd be very surprised if we ended up thumping you. I think the scoreline that you've got is probably, uh, you know, around about what, what I'd go for. So, uh, so yeah, Sammy, thanks a lot for coming on. Um, it's Pleasure. been brilliant to talk. Guys, we'll be doing our main preview tomorrow. Jordan will be back for that. So make sure you've uh, subscribed. Uh, smash a like on the video and we'll see you in the next one. See you in a bit. 